Hello everybody, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and today I'm testing out a 225 game build on a hacked PlayStation Classic using the newest BleemSync version 1.00. With this latest hack, the emulation for PlayStation games has drastically improved thanks to RetroArch now being implemented. So BleemSync version 1.00 beta just released, and it has its share of bugs and issues, but if you have managed to get it up and running, you will find out that it can play PlayStation games much better than before because now we can use RetroArch to run an improved version of the PC SXR emulator to play most of the PlayStation games at very close to full speed, something Sony apparently couldn't handle. And I am using a custom theme, this is a Metal Gear Solid theme that has been modified, and for the game collection these are combined builds from Arcade Man on YouTube. And to be able to add 225 games, I'm using a SanDisk 128GB microSD card along with a 2.0 USB reader. And I would recommend using USB 2.0 with version 1.00 because people are having a lot of issues when trying to use USB 3.0 devices. And if you're looking to play a two-player game, you can use a non-powered USB hub like this on player port 1, and then run the BleemSync USB hack on player port 2 by itself. And if you want to know how to hack the PlayStation Classic using BleemSync version 1.00, I do have a video about that, and I'll make sure to put that down in the description down below. Now let's test out a game, Crash Team Racing. And this seems to play really well. The speed is nice and fast, and the controls are responsive, with no noticeable lag. And if you're looking to access the RetroArch menu, that can be done by pressing Start and Select at the same time. Then you can play with some of the RetroArch features, like Save Game States, and we'll go ahead and test that out right now. So if I scroll down to Save State, that's going to save the game right at the point it's at right now. So I'll unpause the game, play it here for just a few, and then we'll load that state. So now I'm going to push start and select again, and then scroll down to load state, and that's going to take me right back to where I just saved the game. So this seems to be working really nice. Now there is some features with RetroArch that are not working like they should, like the frames per second counter, which is a really big bummer. I wanted that to work so I could show you what the frames per second actually are, but for some reason that counter is not working. With the previous build of RetroArch, the frames per second counter is working just fine. So this is another small issue with version 1.00, but it's really not that big a deal. And just based off our previous tests when using RetroArch, I would guess the frames per second range from 55 to 60 frames per second for most of the games, which is a drastic improvement. To exit a game, we can just simply push the reset button on the console, and that'll take us back to the main menu where it'll make a save game state, or we can also push start and select, and then navigate to quit RetroArch, and that'll take us back to the main menu as well, and bring up a save game state. Now I have had issues when I push the reset button, where sometimes it takes longer than it should to get back to this main menu. So using the start and select method seems to work just a little bit better. All right, let's move on to the next game, Duke Nukem. And with this game, I was having a hard time getting used to the controls. It seems like the game would have been much easier to play with a DualShock controller, but other than that, it plays well. So even though the games are playing well, the emulation is still not perfect. But in my opinion, the emulation is now acceptable. And if Sony would have released the classic with emulation this good, I think customers would have been much happier with their purchase. And just to give you a reference on how bad the stock emulation actually was, some games only played at 15 frames per second, like Batman and Robin. But when playing with RetroArch and the PC SXR emulator, the frames per second rose all the way to 60 frames per second full speed. Now some games with the stock emulator did run a little bit better, with the frames per second averaging 50 to 55 for a very small percentage of games. But with a lot of the games, the frames per second really struggled. Like with this game right here, this is Ridge Racer Type 4. And the frames per second on this when playing with the stock emulator get locked at 30 frames per second, so it makes it play absolutely horrible. In fact, it was so bad that I made a video about it that showed that a hacked Super Nintendo Classic Edition could actually play this game better. But now when playing this game with BleemSync version 1.00 and RetroArch, the frames per second average is 57 to 60, making this game worthy of playing. As far as issues go for having 200 plus games with this setup versus only having a couple games, I haven't really noticed anything different with the performance. Whether I have 2 games or 100 games, it seems to be the same. And now let's go over some of the problems I've run into when using BlameSync. Sometimes, but only when exiting a game, maybe 1 out of 15 times, my console will just power down, then I have to power it back up and everything's fine. But this is an issue I did have on BlameSync 0.4.1 as well. Some issues revolving around version 1.00 is USB storage compatibility not being so great. And it seems like a lot of people are having trouble connecting their classic to a PC to add games, which is a pretty big problem. Another issue I've run into is having a completely working setup just suddenly stop working. For instance, the other night, everything on one of my drives was working perfect, and then the following morning it stopped working. It booted to the BleemSync screen, and then just shut off. And when this happened, I had to just start over and reinstall everything again from scratch. 
So my recommendation for anyone who manages to get their setup working correctly is to make a backup of your flash drive or micro SD card immediately. That way, if for some reason it suddenly stops working, you can just add those backup files right back to your device and you're good to go again. Now keep in mind with version 1.00, this is a beta release, so issues are to be expected. And obviously it has its fair share. But from an emulation standpoint, I think it's doing a great job and future releases are only going to get better. Okay, it's time for me to get out of here, but if you want to stick around, you can. I will be showing emulation from a handful of different games, showing about 45 seconds of gameplay for each game. And if you like this video, if you could, hit that like button, and have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.